The room was dark and silent. You lie in bed and start to fall asleep, when you start to feel extremely cold. You put an extra blanket on the bed, when you notice a creaking noise. You try to look around the room, but you can't see any movement due to the darkness. You turn on the bedside lamp to see the rocking chair moving back and forth, as if someone was sat in it. You cover your face and close your eyes until the sound stops. Welcome to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. This episode is about the ancient Mermaid Inn, thought to be one of the most haunted inns in England. The Mermaid Inn stands on the cobbled lane of Mermaid Street in the town of Rye in East Sussex. In the Doomsday Book of 1086, Rye was recorded as having 189 households, which suggests that it was a large settlement for its time. The name Rye is believed to have come from an Anglo-Saxon word meaning island and was once part of the Saxon manor of Ramersley which was given to the Benedictine Abbey of Ficamp in Normandy by King Ethelred. It stayed in Norman ownership until it was returned to King Henry III in 1247. A small part of Rye still belonged to the Normans. This is still known as Rye Foreign. After the town was back in English ownership, it was fortified with a wall and four gates. Landgate, Strandgate, Baddingsgate, and Postendgate. Only Landgate is still standing. At the same time, Ypri Tower was built, which is now one of the town's oldest buildings. Because Rye is a coastal town, where the English Channel is at its narrowest point, the French often invaded the town. In 1377, the French attacked and wrecked the town by setting fire to every building. They stole anything of value, even the church bells. The men of Rye and the neighbouring village of Winchelsea joined forces and took revenge on the French, returning with the bells and many of the other items. In 1449, the French invaded the town once again setting fire to buildings, but this time without so much devastation because of the new defences. Over many years, the sea at Rye has slowly receded, which created the Romney Marshes that now separate the town from the incoming tides. In the 13th century, the tides were flooding the lower parts of the town, so a tax was introduced to pay for maintenance of the waterways, called a Scot. Those who lived on the higher parts of the town were exempt from paying this tax, giving meaning to the phrase, getting off scot-free. After King Edward I introduced the customs system in the 13th century, the response started the formation of many criminal gangs who started smuggling goods in and out of the country. The south coast was the epicentre of this activity, due to the English Channel being at its narrowest point. The most common contraband would have been goods like silver and gold, wool, hides and cloth. When more restrictions were added in the 17th century, smuggling became more attractive for the gangs, as they could make even more money with more common things like beer, candles and tea, which was very expensive. In 1614, English wool was very sought after all over the world, and heavy restrictions were put on its exportation to try and protect the British wool industry. 
this didn't stop the smugglers. Even though if caught, you were given the death sentence. One of the most notorious criminal gangs was the Hawkehurst Gang, from the village of Hawkehurst in Kent. They operated across the south coast, using the Oak and Ivy Inn as their base in Hawkehurst, and the Mermaid Inn as a second base in Roy, where they were known to drink with their loaded pistols on the table in front of them. The first mention of the gang was recorded in 1735, and they stopped in 1749, when two of their leaders, Arthur Gray and Thomas Kingsmill, were executed. A resident from Roy once wrote about the Hawkehurst Gang. When the Hawkehurst Gang were at the height of their pride and insolence, having seen them after successfully running a cargo of goods on the seashore, seated at the windows of the house, the Mermaid Inn, carousing and smoking their pipes, with their loaded pistols lying on the tables before them. No magistrate daring to interfere with them. It's believed that a secret tunnel runs from the Mermaid Inn to the nearby Old Bell Inn, another place that was used by the Hawkehurst Gang. The cellars of the Mermaid Inn date back to 1156, when the first inn may have stood in that location. The present building was built in 1420, after a French attack when the building was laid to waste by fire. The building received further additions in the 16th century, which most of it is still here today. By 1770, the building stopped functioning as an inn, and by 1847, it was in use as a house owned by Charles Poyle. In 1913, the inn was used as a club, when it was owned by May Aldington, the mother of the novelist Richard Aldington. It became a popular place to visit by many artists and authors, including E.F. Benson, Dame Ellen Terry and Lord Alfred Douglas. The inn was used as a garrison for Canadian officers in the 1940s during World War II. It was later bought by Mr. Al Wilson, a Canadian officer who was stationed there. The inn has been in the ownership of Judith Blinko and Richard Pinwell since 1993 and has the AA Rosette for its award-winning restaurant. Room 1, known as the James Room, is haunted by the ghost of a lady wearing a grey or white dress. She has been seen many times sitting on a chair by the fireplace. Guests staying in the room have reported that their clothes have been moved in the night. They are found wet on the chair, even though there is no possible way they could have got wet. The Fleur de Lis room, room 10, is known to be haunted by the ghost of a man who walks through the bathroom wall and into the main room. The most famous haunting in the Mermaid Inn starts in room 16, the Elizabethan room. People have reported witnessing the ghosts of two swordsmen wearing 16th century style clothing. They enter the room fighting and pass into other rooms until one of the men is killed. The other man then drags the body and drops it through a trapdoor. Many unexplained light anomalies are seen often in the room at night. Some have been photographed. A girlfriend of a member of the Hawkehurst gang is said to haunt the room. It's said that she was murdered because it was thought that she knew too much about the gang and might expose them. Room 17 is named Kingsmill, after one of the Hawkehurst gang leaders, Thomas Kingsmill. This room is thought to be haunted by the wife of George Grey, the founder of the gang. It's thought that she haunted the rocking chair in the room, where it would rock on its own every night 
terrifying guests, and the room would go icy cold. The chair was removed as too many guests were being disturbed. The Hawkehurst room, room 19, is haunted by the apparition of a gentleman wearing old-fashioned clothes. A guest from America witnessed the man sitting on the end of her bed in the night. She was so scared that she stayed in another room with her head covered. Thank you for listening to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. If you enjoy this channel, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. It's very appreciated. You can find more information about the episodes on the website, ghosttales.co.uk and on the Facebook and Instagram pages at Ghost Tales Podcast. All music, research, writing, production, art and sound effects are all my own work. Mm -hmm.